breaking news for us right now. The president's staff secretary, a man by the name of Rob Porter, has now resigned his post. Unclear when exactly he will be departing the White House. She said that that timeline wasn't immediate. My colleague at the White House, Chief White House Correspondent Hallie Jackson, is there right now. And Hallie, to give a little context to our audience that may not know anything about this man, Rob Porter, Hans Nichols yeah. on the left. We'll talk to him about the conversation sure. about the military parade in a second. First, to give him some sense, the DailyMail.com first reported allegations of physical and verbal abuse, allegations made by two ex-wives of Porter. We should be clear that NBC News is reaching out to those women. We haven't independently verified those claims right now. We are trying to investigate the specific claims. But he says, among other things, that these outrageous allegations are simply false. This is an abrupt twist in a White House that has already seen plenty of uh, transitions, many of them unexpected. This one, a guy who works routinely with the president. You and I see him often joining the, the president time. on travel yeah. as well. Yeah, Peter. So, so a couple of things here, and I'm just sort of dipping into your conversation that you're having, so I don't mean to be repetitive, but yes, so, uh, Rob Porter is leaving the White House. We, it's not clear when. Uh, that date is still being worked out as he wants to work on a smooth transition out of here, according to Sarah Huckabee Sanders uh, from the podium there. So you're right in that, in that Porter, and again, listen, if you watch MSNBC a lot, you might not have heard the name Rob Porter a lot. If you watch any cable news, he's not somebody that comes up. He's not a public-facing person inside the West Wing, but he is one of the inner circle members of the president's uh, group here inside the West Wing, traveling with him often. You know, he sits right there by the Oval Office. He is involved in speech writing for for example, on the State of the Union speech. Correct. He has increasingly in recent weeks taken a, a bigger role in that. Uh, he is somebody who is, uh, talks with people back on Capitol Hill. Remember, he came from Senator Orrin Hatch's office. He went to Harvard. He went to Oxford. He got involved in politics. He was a previous intern at the White House. So this is somebody who is uh, who is very involved in the policy making uh, and the, the interactions that the president has. Uh, so, so just to give some background to him, because again, he's not like he works with Stephen Miller, but Stephen Miller, I think, is a much more uh, well-known known figure than Rob right. Porter has been. So that is some news coming out of the White House on Porter as you ticked through some of what we do and don't know about the allegations against him and where that's coming from, Peter. Uh, we don't know yet who will replace Rob Porter. We do know that, uh, I think I mentioned he worked for Senator Hatch. There's a new statement out now yeah. uh, from Senator Orrin Hatch. But remember, all of this is coming now, I think 15 hours after we first got the statements of support for Rob Porter from people, including Chief of Staff John Kelly. Uh, and you heard us ask Sarah Sanders what has changed since then. Why did the president accept the resignation if he believes Porter did nothing wrong? Uh, and, and you heard her sort of respond. Go ahead, Peter. Sorry. What I was going to say, as important as this conversation about his departure is the conversation that needs to be had about the vetting that went into Rob Porter before exactly he arrived right. at the White House. We have now seen, at least as published by DailyMail.com, documents that suggest there was a restraining order by one of these uh, former wives of Porter. And this is an administration that faced a lot of questions about the vetting process. Exactly. There are questions yeah. about his security clearance. But what did they or how did they not know about this before he joined the team? Uh, so, number one, the White House won't talk about security clearances. Sarah Sanders repeatedly refused to answer that question. But I think you hit the nail on the head, Peter, which, which was the questions. Remember in the beginning of the administration back last year when you and I and Kristen Welker were here covering this? And right. there were questions about security clearances for, for example, Mike Flynn, how they didn't know some of the things that had happened in Flynn's life. Then the national security advisor, before he was fired, what he did before he entered the White House team. So there, there were a lot of questions about a number of people that the White House was considering bringing on board. Uh, and that vet question was one that we asked repeatedly in the beginning of the administration. That is now rearing its head again with no clarity at this point from the White House about how and when and what the deal was.